ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back with more Katawa Shoujo, and yes, it's time for more Hanako time. Hanako is more noticeable in her absence than she was, than when she's in the room. I feel her empty desk calling out for me. I find myself peering over my shoulder endlessly, hoping that I'm hallucinating and that Hanako will magically appear. She makes sure... She's as small a presence as possible when she attends class, and although she has been getting better re recently, that fact never changed. Nobody ever pays her any heed in class, and now that she's not here, they don't notice her absence. It's as if she never existed. Lily did that say that her skipping class wasn't an unusual thing before I met her, but still very off-putting. The bells heralding the end of school make me jump in my seat. It's only now that I notice Misha's prodding me in the side with her medi mechanical pencil. That was a medical pencil. I'm like, what's a medical pencil? Hello? Anybody there? Hey, stop that. Ah, there you are. Welcome back to Earth, Hichan. What are you talking about? You kept on dazing off into space. I was beginning to think you might be trying to contact alien life. I really didn't get much sleep. No, Windows, I would not like to update right now. I'm not sure whether it was due to my medicine side effects, Hanako's panic attack yesterday, my worrying about her in general, or all three. I yawned tirely <sighs> before resting my chin in my palm, having been reminded of how badly I slept. Hey, you really alright? Yesterday kind of rattled me as well. Yeah, I guess. I want to speak to Hanako then again, though. Did you see her last night? Yeah, Lily and I talked to her. Uh, sound a little bit weird, but can you tell she's in a thank you from both me and Lily? I know Lily technically didn't thank she's in a, but I could tell by her reaction last night she wanted to. At least, that's how I worked it out in my head. Mm. Uh, I think what she chan is trying to say is, you're welcome. The furious signing in Shizune's redded cheeks tell me that she's, what she said was entirely different. Her blatant, flustered expression is amusing enough to make me chuckle. What's so funny, Hichan? Was it something we said? Thunder Zero. Are you playing it through it too? Alright, dude. No, no. That's not it. I was simply thinking about how cute Shizune can be at times. You're right. Shichan is really cute when she tries not to be. I noticed that Misha decided not to sign her response to Shizune. Maybe Shizune's rage is enough to counter any quantity of cute. Nevertheless, Shizune quickly calms down and signs something else to Misha. Oh? Okay. Hichan, Shizune wants you to come and have dinner with us. Dinner, eh? Turning away from them a bit, lest I be swayed by their pleading smiles, I begin to mull it over. The invitation certainly is tempting. A takeaway dinner with two cute girls is not a bad thing after all. The thought of Hanako locked up in her room though keeps dancing on the edge of my mind. Sorry I have to pass. Aww. Misha doesn't sign my response but Shizune picks up on it easily enough and grimaces in disappointment. She moves her arms, assumingly beginning some form of either protest or coercion, before stopping herself and tapping Misha on the shoulder twice. Once Misha gives Shizune her attention, the only statement Shizune has on the matter is a shrug. Oh well, it's your choice, Hichen. I promise I'll join you two another time if that helps. Misha perks up at this, but Shizune doesn't share her reaction. With a flick of the head to signal for Misha to follow her away, Shizune simply raises her hand to silently wave me goodbye. As the two make their way out the door, I return this gesture until they're out of sight. I didn't think they would be so disappointed. It makes me feel a little bad for ditching them. Still, I have things to do. The girls' dormitory is especially rowdy today with a number of girls. Lowey playing games and watching television in the common room on the first floor. I can hear their voices even now standing in front of Hanako's door. It's an odd contrast to the emptiness of the floor she's on. The voices from below make the emptiness feel all the more lonely. I had hoped Hanako would be in class today, especially after the talk Lily and I had with her last night, but I feel I shouldn't hold it against her. It was a pretty awful episode, and to have experienced it firsthand must be all the worst. Not knowing what state she's in, I take a small breath before giving a sharp knock on the brown door. All I can do is stand and wait, doing my best not to feel anxious. As the seconds wear on, I begin to think she might be asleep and didn't hear me knocking. The door handle rattles a little before I can raise my hand to knock again, though. 
Uh, what's she wearing? The door opens a sliver, an eye appearing in a gap only large enough for it to peer through. I'm sure this girl would install a people in her dormitory door if only such a thing were allowed. I just stand and smile at her. I don't think words would really help to her, after all. The act is returned in kind, with Hanako wordlessly looking at me. The gap's not wide enough to see her expression, and I can only guess what she's thinking. Time passes as we look at each other, the only sound being a disembodied gaiety from the ground floor. Gaiety? 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 I'm not sure how long it takes, but eventually the eye moves away. I keep wondering whether she'll let me in or shut me out. The door slowly begins to creak open. Now that I have a full view of her and her bedroom behind, the first thing I notice that Hanako's hair is quite damp. She's recently showered, which is made even more obvious by the scent of the shampoo wafting towards me. For a second, I thought that said wife, waifu towards me. I was like, wait, that's not it. That's not a something that smells do. The look on her face seems one of curiosity, as if she's not really sure what to make of me. Even so, I'm not really all that sure of what she's thinking. It feels as if she's gone away for a long time and having now returned, neither of us knows what to say to the other. Hanako realizes she's staring, looking away awkwardly before turning to the side and gazing at her feet. I decide to take it as an invitation to step past her into the room, closing the door behind me as I do. Oh, closing the door, me and a girl alone in her room? I can see her hands fiddling in the folds of the oversized gown that hangs from her shoulders. I try to concentrate on what I want to say, but the scent of her addles my senses. To my surprise, it's not me but Hanako that breaks the silence. Why? Because, uh, why did I come here? I was worried about Hanako, so I came to her room. She let me in as I had hoped, and then what? What did I mean to do? What did I mean to say? Why did I think this through before coming here? I want to make up for what I feel I caused, at least partially. I want to try to remove the distance I feel between us since then, since then, and to see her happy. How could I do that when I don't know the first thing about her? I wonder, I wonder if this is how Iwanako felt when she saw me laying on that sterile, pastel blue hospital bed. That's the girl that, that we confessed to and gave us a heart attacks. I, uh, a deep sigh steadies my nerves a little and ends my stammering. I don't think I've ever felt this nervous around anyone before. When I'm like this, I don't think I can lie. Even if I could bring myself to, Hanako would see right through it. I don't know, I just want to see you, I guess. Her fingers stop moving, giving me a little surprise. Looking up to her face, she gives a sweet smile and a nod. That was a satisfactory answer for her? Since you're here, I'd like to play a game of chess with you. Now that's a euphemism I can get behind. I almost hang my head in disbelief that all she wants to do, after I've been winding myself up so much, is play a game. Looking at her face though, a tentative smile perched upon it, I realize this is more than that. Ooh. This is a very... We're gonna play strip chess. She could not... She could have not bothered answering the door. She could have shut it as soon as she saw my face. She could have asked me to leave. She could have rejected me at many points, but she didn't. Now, with this calm face, she wants me to play the same game that we played when we first really spent time alone together. A feeling of relief washes over me. Everything will be all right. Hanako has let me into her world. As long as she can be, as long as we can be together like this, I think everything will be all right. It would be my pleasure. That was a really short day. My goodness. That was, that was a really short day. The day of Hanako's birthday party is finally here. To be honest, I'm looking forward to seeing Hanako and Lily in their pajamas again. <laughs> you perv. I approve, though. Hanako's gown has grown on me as looking rather cute, though a bit conservative, and Lily's shorts and thin silken top are a lovely combination. But the event is stained a little with the memory of Hanako's reaction to it. I still don't really understand what happened, only being able to vaguely guess at the possible reasons for it, but I don't think finding the answer will be as straightforward as asking her. With that in mind, I knock at the door next to Hanako's. Is that you, Hisao? Yep, it's me. I can hear the pitter-patter of footsteps coming to the door, followed by the sound of her banging on the wall. Oh, 
Lily must have missed where her door was. I don't think I've ever seen Lily's door locked before, and it makes me a little suspicious. Once the door opens, the sight is a little underwhelming for a birthday party. It's Lily. It's not like she can see her decorations, dude. Hanako returns to her seat at the table with a quick smile and a nod, leaving me to close and, assuming they wanted it to be kept that way, lock the door. As I do so, I realize that the scene before me is that of an evening tea party, just like any other between the two. Somehow, I don't think I should be surprised. To my relief, Hanako looks relatively calm. The break from class has probably done her good, giving her time to wind down a bit. I take a seat between the two on a low table at the center of Lily's room, the brightly colored teapot steaming away before us. A tall brown bag close by Lily's side catches my attention. I covertly try to glance inside it a couple of times, but can't get a good look from here. Looking to Hanako, it seems like she's curious about it as I am. Hey, Lily? Lily finishes off the teacup raised to her lips before setting it down and giving me her attention. Yeah? I was wondering about that brown bag. She pauses for a moment, then gives a slightly cheeky smile. That would be Akita's present. Unfortunately, she was working and can't join us. Lily leans over and feels out the item inside before raising her arm. I raise an eyebrow as two items, not one, rise from the bag. The glass necks are grasped by Lily on either side of her middle fingers, so that, uh, so that's why she had her door locked. Wine! Oh ho! Oh ho! There are two small thuds as the bottles are brought to rest on the table, one red and one white. I want to believe it's fake, non-alcoholic wine, but if it was, there won't be any need for this circumspect. Alcohol? Are you sure this is a good idea? I am. What could go on between one guy, two girls, and some alcohol? Lily smiles politely and giggles. I'm not really convinced that she is. These would be a present from my sister. I know it's a bit questionable, but a little shouldn't hurt. If Lily took serious issues with it, I don't think she would have agreed so quite, quite so easily. That aside, I had Akita squared as a serious and responsible type. Maybe like an older Lily, but it looks like I was wrong. We weren't even legally able to drink yet. Well, in that case, I won't complain. They don't look bad either. You don't know. You haven't drank before. I'm no connoisseur, but at least the bottles look nice, apart from a sur surreptitious glass of wine or two given for my father at family di dinners. I hadn't really had enough to know what that what's what. That... And I can't really say I'm a total straight edge. Going by Hanako's expression, she's thinking the same, and it's her birthday anyways. Shall I open one? Yeah! My heart skips as I hear three sharp bangs coming from Lily's door. Hanako's head flicks around and Lily's eyes close as she listens intently. None of us want to be busted for this. Who is it? Let me in, I'm cold. Lily lets out a resigned sigh before mentioning for Hanako to open the door. She obediently gets up and fusses with her gown before moving, apparently still not quite sure of who it is, but trusting enough in Lily to do as she requests. I can just see a blonde, dark-skinned figure becoming visible over Hanako's shoulder as she opens the door. Happy birthday, Hanako! Thank you, Akira. Hanako gives a small bow while twiddling her fingers in front of her, so this is Lily's elusive sister. Who is it? Oh. That's a... Uh... Not the sister I expected. Akira follows Hanako to the table after shutting the door behind her, giving me plenty of time to have a good look at her. She looks to be about the same height as Hanako and has short blonde hair that's quite roughly cut. That, in addition to her rather modest breasts, masculine suit, and deep voice gives her quite an androgynous effect. Without further ado, she plops herself down on the side of the table across from me. It's nice to have you or, uh, have your company after all, Akira. Did work let you off? Yep, I had to go back there in a bit, but I managed to get enough of a break to drive down. So, this would be his sal then. A confident smile gets thrown in my direction, so I nod politely in return. Considering she just jumped straight to using my first name, she's much more informal than her appearance would suggest. Wait, if she already knows who I am, that must mean that Lily's talked about me with her. I wonder what she's said. Sorry for not introducing you, his sal. This is Akira Sato, my elder sister. I see. Nice to meet you. The person in question loudly claps her hands together, making Hanako jump a little bit. Akira notices this and looks uneasy for a fraction of a second before getting back into her stride. 
Only now do I realize that Akira hasn't paid Hanako's scars any undue attention. Hanako also seems to be comfortable, if not exactly relaxed, around Akira. Well then, I assume the presents got through. No point in waiting considering his style and the birthday girl look like they are pretty eager. Lily giggles as I awkwardly turn away, a little embarrassed by the fact I couldn't hide my interest. Hanako's eyes are telling me she wants to try the wine together with me though, so I settle for a look of badly feigned indifference. Akira manages to uncork the first bottle with small effort, and Hanako gets some glasses before I get to pour the four of them a full, four of them full of white wine. I heard somewhere that white wine has less alcohol than red wine, so I think it'd be best to start with. I mean, you can also just look on the wine bottles themselves; it tells you. Here's to Lily. Here's to Hanako and to Lily's trap. Cheers! 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 After the traditional raising of glasses, come pie! Come pie! <sighs> Warm wine? Look, it depends on the wine. You don't drink chilled red wine. After the traditional raising of glasses, we all take the sips of the pale yellow liquid. It's nothing like the stuff I've had with my parents, with the fruitiness of the flavor almost entirely taste hiding the taste of alcohol. Maybe this is what proper wine is supposed to taste like. No, this is girly, girly wines. Akira just chose a wine which would be suited to our taste since none of us are used to alcohol yet. Yeah, it's a girly wine. A nice, like... No, probably not even like the Chardonnay. Or at least, I hope none of us are. This isn't too bad. I was expecting something harsher. If you hadn't liked it, I have a few other varieties you could have chosen from. You sound like you know your stuff when it comes to wines. Only a bit. I'm more of a beer person. I have the drinking side down pat, though. As if to prove her point, she refills her glass before bringing it to her lips and flicking her head back. How can I suddenly to watch as a whole glass disappears? Huh. Yeah, Lily, are you not going to watch? I can't decide whether to be impressed or put off, but I certainly don't have any urge to imitate the act. Lily grimaces slightly at her sister's boast. I notice that she is sipping for her glass as she does so. Anyways, now that Akira's gifts have been opened and sampled, shall we move on to ours? Gifts? That's right, we got you presents. It's your birthday after all. This is from me. Oh. I'm trying to like listen to the music to gauge the atmosphere. Lily pulls out the carefully wrapped doll from under the table and passes it to Hanako. Hanako handles the present as if it were glassware, carefully turning it over to remove the tape that's bind that binds the wrapping. Eventually, the paper falls from the doll, revealing the emerald green of the doll's dress. It's beautiful. I'm not sure what reaction I was expecting from Hanako. The near total lack of dolls in her room made me think that she didn't care for them, but the look in her eyes now is something different. She turns the dolls over with the same delicacy she afforded the wrapping, as if she was expecting it to fall apart in her hands. I'm glad you like it. Hisao picked it out, to be honest. Hanako suddenly remembers that she's not alone in the room, shifting her focus from the doll. I like it. Thank you, Lily and Hisao. Actually, I got you something else. I reach into my bag and remove the wrapped chest set. Here, happy birthday. Hanako carefully sits Lily's doll next to her and opens my present with the same care she showed Lily's. Before long, the checkered squares to the chessboard are visible and Hanako gently runs her fingers across the carved surfaces. Oh, I'd love her to run her fingers across my carved surfaces. Although my surfaces, I suppose, are less carved and more... Rounded? Pudgy? Inflated? Almost by accident, she triggers a catch on the lid. Startling herself in the process, she opens it and retrieves one of the gray pieces. She seems as absorbed in the chess pieces as she was in a doll before. They're coral, natural coral, undyed or so I'm told. Thank you, Hisao. No problem, it's your birthday after all. That's right, my birthday. Once again, Hanako's reaction seems a little off, but she does carefully close the board lid. I notice Akita's smile beginning to look very strained. I wonder if she knows anything about what happened in class, given that she seems to be treading on eggshells around Hanako. I'll have to play with you again sometime.
I'll make sure I'll play you. I'll have to play you again sometime. I'll make sure I play you first. She takes the doll she received from Lily and holds it to her chest. Oh my god, it does look like a Lily. Together with a small chessboard, putting the piece on top. The act seems to settle her down somewhat, and we just sit in silence for a while. I think it's one of those times I've seen her genuinely happy, cradling the friendship of two people to her chest as tightly as she can. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Sal. In the process of thanking us, Hanako drops the chess piece and fumbles a bit in her rush to retrieve it. Once she finds it, Hanako puts the chess set down and nervously gulps at her wine. It's as if the real world suddenly rushed back into her consciousness, and her fastest escape was in the glass. Hey, you shouldn't drink it so fast. Shut up, his Sal! It's my birthday! I've gotta drink if I want to! You're not my dad! I'm gonna drink as much as I want! Oops, lost my mouse. It's a party! Despite saying this, there's a slightly concerned edge to her voice, eventually acquiescing. Lily proceeds to follow Hanukkah's lead, though not as eagerly. She looks to be taking small sips from her glass and letting the wine settle in her tongue before swallowing. Mm. I decide this is probably the best approach, and do the same. We're all swallowers here. Since this is a little of a going away party for you as well, I hope you enjoy your trip at least a little, Lily. Hopefully your aunt will be okay. And Lily's sister. And, and Lily's sister. I, I mean, I'm assuming that Lily's aunt is also Lily's sister aunt. You know, since they're going away together. Lily and I are taken aback by Hanako's fervish, I fervor to wish Lily well. Despite her own familial situation, I'm a little impressed. My, my, thank you both. I'll be sure to convey your thoughts to my family when I meet them. Lily's sister is just, oh, there we go. It'll all be fine in the end, Lily. Don't worry about it. Since the room's mood has become known to be more sullen aside to try and move things along. Well then, shall we start on the cake? My tentative suggestion has the intended effect, everyone lightening up considerably. Yes, please. Though, no, 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 no. The acting was, the acting was good, but it wasn't fun. Seven out of 10. I picked one up before I came along with some snacks. Well done, Hissa. At least one of us remembered to bring a cake. Everyone seems to welcome the distraction, so I retrieved the cake from my bag and started cutting it up. And then I realized that I put it in my bag, and it's all squished to the side. Who puts a cake in their bag? Mixing wine and chocolate cake isn't something I thought would work well, but none of us seemed to mind. Conversation is temporarily suspended as we start to eat. I was initially wary of this idea. After Hanako's panic attack, I expected the worst from tonight, but I think Lily's idea of giving her good memories for her birthday is working. That, and also having it shared with her going away party. From Hanako's reaction to her kiss, I can tell she is really appreciative. Hanako tries to pour herself another glass, but ends up spilling some on the table. She's had a couple by now, so considering that she's never had alcohol before, it's no wonder if she's feeling a bit lightheaded. Sorry, Lily, I didn't mean to make a mess. Lily can't see it. Just pretend like there was always that stain on her table. <sighs> Don't worry, I got it. Whoa. Lily reaches sideways and gently takes the fussing Hanako in her arms, giving me pause. This is, oh, this is adorable. See, girl, see, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever want to get a little cozy with your friend... Just spill some wine on their table. That gets you in like nothing else. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spill wine on your table. Let's cuddle. It's okay, Hanako. I'm just happy you're here. Hanako gives only a faint nod in response. It's fitting, I suppose, that Lily would be the one to support her like this. I have no idea what Hanako would be like if she hadn't. Seeing the two like this makes me appreciate the fact that I'm privy to such an intimate moment. Even Akira can't help but smile at the sight. I never would have thought I'd managed to find new friends so quickly, and I'm all the more thankful for that, of all people. These two and I befriended. They slowly break off from one another, Hanako regaining herself somewhat while I quickly get myself back on task. Ah. 
I find a towel among Lily's tea set and start mopping up the spillage. By the time I finish, however, Hanako and Lily have managed to uncork the other bottle and have topped off their glasses. Looks like you're enjoying the wine then. Don't go too crazy with it after this, mind. We all dutifully nod and agree, but, here, but her reminder feels a bit silly given that she's the one supplying underage people with alcohol. Yeah! Anyways, like I said, I don't know why I have to go to class at all. I want to be an actor. And I'm going to be the best actor. I don't need fucking class. And fuck Shizune. Shizune sucks. You know what I think? I think... I think you're the best. You're my favorite deputy. The second glass of wine goes down a lot quicker than the first. Before any of us notice, the second bottle is empty while Akira is helping us finish them off. Hanako looks to be almost equal equaling her in the amount she's had. My head feels a little light, but I think I've managed to gauge my own tolerance surprisingly well. Hanako smiles lazily, toying with her doll's hair. I think it's a pretty safe bet that she hasn't moderated herself as well as I. I don't think it was Hanako's intention to get this drunk, but it seems that the alcohol hit her all at once. She has a very light frame, something which wouldn't help her handle her booze well either. Lily cradles her glass, running a finger around the rim. Her cheeks are rosy, but she's managed to avoid looking woefully drunk. Akira is, as I somewhat expected, largely unaffected. Her smile might be a little wider than before, though, maybe. Hanako suddenly hiccups and accidentally knocks over the doll. Oh no, Hanako, you're dropping shit everywhere. I think I should go to bed. Thank you, Sal. Thanks, Lily and Akira. She slurs Akira's name pretty hard, barely avoiding breaking out into a giggle midway through. She's completely plastered, and I can't decide whether she feel a little bad for not or not for being amused at the state she's in. It really is bizarre to see her acting so carefree. A shame it's only with the help of alcohol. Here, let me give you a hand. Akira begins to help Hanako out, but she's stopped when Lily gives a sharp cough. His sound. <coughs> hey, Sal, would you care to help her to bed? Akira looks a little surprised, and I have to admit I am as well. I don't mind her request at all, let alone when she said it with such a smile. It just comes rather unexpectedly. Sure. No problem. Ooh! Just saying, just saying, I am ready to switch scenes at any moment here. I pick up the chest set and help Hanako stand up. I do feel somewhat responsible for her considering that, other than Akira, I'm probably the most sober person in the room. She nurses the doll in one hand and offers me the other. Oh, now this is a change of scene I can get behind. <clears throat> we stumble out a door and into the hallway and into Hanako's room. Hanako bumping into me a number of times on the way. Inside the room, I flick on the lights as Hanako turns her attention towards a shelf on her dresser. An elegant doll is sitting on it staring into the bare room. There you go, you'll be safe in here. Those look really creepy. I'm not comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope, 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 I'm not okay with this. Hanako gingerly places a doll next to the other one and straightens its dress. They sit in silence, hair and clothes perfectly arranged, just like the teapot in Lily's room. They serve as a distinct contrast to the dull whites and grays that permeate her room. Satisfied that her dolls, her only two real possessions are safe, Hanako takes a step back and stands up, staggering severely. I step forward to catch her if need be, but she regains her balance without my help. So I just grab her butt. For a while, both of us stand in silence as Hanako looks downwards towards the cupboard, and I look at the bed. Would you like to, uh, schmooze? 
After a minute or two, she begins to sway a little side to side. It's very off-putting. Are you going to be all right? No, you should stay with me all night to make sure I don't die. Hanako raises her head and turns to me as if she's only just remembered that I'm also in the room. That's unexpected is that she takes two steps towards me and wraps her arms around my body, her head almost coming to rest against my chest. I can feel my heart beating as if all of my senses feel like they're coming alive again after they're deadening through the previous drinking. What's up, the big bear? The smell of wine in her breath, the feeling of her fingers through my clothing, the scent of her hair underneath my chin. Her hands remain out in front of me, daring not to touch her. I not and my hands remain out in front of me, daring not to touch her. The temptation is there to hug her, to embrace her, to tell her everything will be fine, but this feels wrong. Really, really wrong. The best kind of wrong. Hanako. But I want to stay with you and Lily. Hanako's slurring reminds me a bit of Misha. She probably wouldn't be pleased to hear that. You know I can't. You're a girl and I'm a guy. And Lily needs to sleep. Oh. Hanako wasn't intent on getting any sleeping done. She gives a disappointed groan. It's so strange for her to act so forward. Don't worry, I'll see you again tomorrow, okay? I decide to rest a hand on her head to reassure her, deciding that this is as far as I'll allow myself to go in terms of physical contact with her while she's in this state. Hanako's head nuzzles against my chest. It makes me feel all the more uneasy with the situation. As her arms tighten around my back, I decidedly, I decide to bail out. I rest my hands on her shoulders and give a firm but gentle push. Her grip tightens a little as I do, but she eventually breaks it off. I don't want you to go. Hanako, please. Akira and Lily are going to start thinking weird stuff if I take too long here. And very accurately, too. It's perfectly true, too. I really don't want to take any chances. And I feel very uncomfortable right now. It's because of how tight my pants are. I shouldn't try to read anything into how she's acting right now. I read that aside from alcohol-lowering inhibitions, people can react to getting drunk in many different ways that don't necessarily reflect reality. And even without that, there are plenty of ways to interpret what she's saying. As long as she's safe, I'm going to try and get out of her room as soon as possible. Hanako hiccups again, looking a right mess as she stands and looks downcast in the center of the room. Her personality changed as she drank more and more, and now, all alone in her room with me, her previous brightness seems to have left her. Was she just acting upbeat to make sure we don't worry? Even if she was, what could I possibly do for her since I do exactly the same thing in regards to my own condition? Distancing myself from my thoughts, I eventually manage to corral Hanako towards her bed, though her attempts to tame the wild sheets on it end up accomplishing little. Sorry about tonight, Hanako. I know you probably won't remember any of this, but happy birthday. I'm sorry I couldn't do more for you. She's drunk. Not, like, fucking wasted. She looked up at me for a moment. I have no idea if what I actually said got through to her, but any chance to ask is lost as her eyes peacefully close. I sigh in relief before quietly backing away from her and leaving the room, flicking the light switch off as I go. I hesitate a little before opening the door to Lily's room again, quickly rehearsing what I should say if I got questioned about Hanako. After a few seconds, I still can't come up with anything. I open the door to make sure to close behind me. Lest any passing students catch a glimpse of the wine before turning my attention to the two girls at the table. Akira casually smiling as Lily and I welcome the change to the mood in Hanako's room. Oh, I welcome the change from the mood in Hanako's room. Gotcha. Is that you, Hisao? Who else would it be, ladies? Yeah, I got Hanako to bed. She's sleeping now. That's good. I have to admit, I hadn't thought she drank quite so much. Hey, it's fine. She's all safe and tucked in bed now, with the way she is. She awkwardly trails off, though. Lily and I would hardly protest. For someone so anxious and fearful drinking would give an easy out from those constant feelings. I wish I could have done more for her. I feel useless. Looking at Lily, I think back to what I asked myself in town. My relationship with her is that of a friend, and has only ever felt that way. But now I think I know why. Lily's been there for both Hanako and me since I first met her, but she's like that for everyone, trying to do her best to make them feel better. With that in mind, what's the bond between me and Hanako? Before rescuing our relationship following the panic attack, 
I inadvertently triggered during class. I feel like we are back to being friends, and she's on my mind more and more. I can't say I view any other girl in quite the same way, except for Emmy. But maybe it's just a normal reaction to someone acting like this. Say, Akita. She yawns before looking at me. It's getting pretty late. You know what happened with Hanako, don't you? Yeah, Lily told me. I negotiated pretty hard for a break so I could come down and make her birthday a bit brighter. We get along pretty well. It's surprising to hear that from someone as extroverted as her, but if Hanako came to know her through Lily, maybe she had time to get used to Akira. And on that note, I better get going. I'm already going to be late as it is. But it's already so late. Sorry, we had a bunch of work dropping on us, so over time it is. She levers herself up with a grunt and heads past me towards the door. Just before she leaves, she turns back towards us. Use protection, you kids. You scamps. <laughs> haven't forgotten about the time for the flight and all the rest. Don't worry, I have everything ready. It's just a matter of packing when it gets closer to the time to leave. Atta girl. See you guys later then. With that, she disappears through the door with her hand held high in farewell. Your sister is something, all right. I probably should have thought that comment through before saying it. Regardless, Lily seems quite amused at my appraisal. You okay after all that drinking? Not wasted and just hiding it well? I assure you I'm quite all right. I can moderate myself well. You seem quite self-possessed as well, if I do say so myself. I guess your moderation applies to me as well. With a little hesitation, I take a seat on a table in front of Lily. At the table. I was like, on the table, you rude man. I want to add, address this directly, if for no other reason than to settle my own thoughts. I didn't mean to ask this for a while, but it took me a while to make up my mind. Do you have any idea about what triggered that panic attack? I gathered it has something to do with her birthday, but I don't know anything. Even Akita has really caref was really careful around her, so I assume she knows as well. Well, I mean... We asked her directly and she told us. <sighs> Goodbye, T. I'll miss you. Lily's smile drops, the gaiety of the birthday party now well and truly over. To be honest, I'm not sure all the details myself. Hanako told you that she was in a house fire. She told me as much after we met and spent a lot of time together. Other than that, she quite simply never told me. She never told you. Assuming the worst, what does she have to look back upon? A life of isolation and possibly even death of her family? Maybe even going as far as blaming her existence for their deaths? Even think about what little I know of Hanako's past is bleak. To have lived through all that and to live with those memories must be infinitely worse. Lily looks similarly depressed, but I can see her rebuild at least some of her composure before my eyes. I get the feeling that both of us are talking more frankly than we might otherwise do thanks to the wine, but it feels like just talking this out is a good thing anyways. I feel kind of helpless about it. When it's put like that, what can I possibly do for her? I'm not wholly sure I should tell you this, but Hanako told me that you visited her the day after we both went to check on her. I must admit I did not predict she would take such a step so quickly after what happened, nor did I expect you to. I think it was a nice gesture on your part. It wasn't much, really. It's just, at times like this, I th sometimes think it would be better if we never had to leave Yamaku or at least this town. Things are so much easier without others around. I didn't expect Lily to look quite so troubled as what I say, and for a while she looks lost in thought. She moves to speak but stops herself as soon as she does and rethinks. It's a bit off-putting. That's the second time we said off-putting. I think... Tell me, do you have anything planned for Friday evening? Friday evening? No. Isn't your flight to Scotland the next day? I don't think it'd be a good idea to tire yourself out before you even get there. I actually think it's a great idea. I like to sleep on flights, so... Staying up late before a flight? That's my usual game plan, especially a long one. It's like time traveling. You sleep on the way there, you wake up, you're there. Wow, magic. <laughs> I'll be alright. You needn't worry about me. I'll do this tomorrow evening, but I imagine Hanako will be feeling rather off for a while. The thought of how she's going to be tomorrow makes me grimace. Maybe we should count our blessings that she didn't end up simply throwing up from drinking so much while having such a low tolerance. 
Well, I'm going to be able to attend whatever you're planning. What is it? Nothing unusual, I assure you. Just a little excursion. And you better be off his cell. I can't imagine it's long until curfew is here. Oh, damn, curfew. I look at the clock next to Lily's bed, but it seems to be some oddity without written numerals, which I suppose makes sense, because she's blind. Not wanting to risk a haughty security patrol giving me a scolding, I get up and decide to go to my dorm, and she says, oh, you know, or we could just stay here. I mean, right? It's not like Lily would notice. We just say, all right, bye, Lily. I'll see you later. We open the door, and we close the door, and then we just hide in the room quietly she'll never know that we're there well then I guess I'll see you and Hanako tomorrow assuming the both of you have managed to get up in the morning thank you for your concern Hisao see you later with that I make my way out of her door and into the hallway I hope her idea will be a good one no 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 you can't crawl under bed yet you have to wait until she like cause that's like far too close she'll definitely hear you you have to like Wait until she goes to the bathroom or something, and then you get closer to the bed. But really what you want to do is you plant yourself in a corner somewhere that she won't normally go to, and that way you can just watch her sleep all night long. The hammering of a fist against the door feels like a nail being pounded into my head. Yeah, that's how I feel when Kenji comes to. Once. Twice. Once. Twice. I just want the clip once, twice, three times. A lady. I let out a long, annoyed breath and bear it while pressing my eyelids shut, fervently hoping for whatever it is, just whoever it is, just go away. I bet it's Kenji. I feel pretty damn awful. My face feels like it's cast out of lead. My arms feel heavy and I feel very queasy. It's been like this since I woke up half an hour ago and I can't summon the energy to pick myself out of bed. So this is what they call a hangover. I'll be honest, I've never drank enough to get a hangover. Like, I uh, I have a very low alcohol tolerance. And I get flush red very quickly. But I've never, like, even though I've drank enough to make myself feel really bad while drinking, I've never had a hangover afterwards. We didn't have two cups. We had two bottles, although shared between four people. I wonder if perhaps this is the best treatment for teenagers who desperately want to try drinking as a way to feel like an adult. Considering how unpleasant this is, it's not something I want to repeat. Oh, Hisao, I think there'll be other ways we can feel like an adult. Maybe Hanako can help us. A series of thumps ring out again, reverberating around the room. I wish they'd just give up already. I have no intention of getting out of bed for them. Seconds pass, turning to minutes. Since no more knocks are coming for the door, whoever it must be must have left. And then Kenji breaks in. Looking at my clock, the time when I really should think about getting dressed and ready for class is approaching. I don't think I can manage it, though. I hate cutting class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get much done at this rate. I can tell I look like a mess without needing to look in a mirror to confirm it. <clears throat> the morning rush has given me enough time to stand outside the classroom for a while without looking too suspicious. I hope that Muto doesn't ask any awkward questions about my not attending school yesterday. Damn, we missed a whole day already. That was fast. I was sick. That much is true. It's just the reason for it. I had to hide. Confident I can get by with a tactical omission of certain truths, I stride into the classroom, appearing my best. The instant I open a door and take a single step in, I can feel a dozen eyes looking at me. There's no way I'm imagining this and not even making any attempts to hide it. Hisao! Where are your pants? Oh, I'm more, I'm, I'm more drunk than I thought. Sorry. My eyes quickly take a sweep around the classroom. I spot Hanako. We make eye contact momentarily before she looks down and stares very hard at her desk. Did she spill the beans? Muto may be okay as far as teachers go, but underage drinking on campus is not exactly something to be taken lightly. I looked at him with some trepidation. Feeling better today? Yeah, thanks. He motions me to take my seat. My legs feeling like sticks as they carry me there. This is going to be a long day. As soon as the lunch bell rings, I'm on my way to Hanako's desk to ask her what's going on. Hanako, did you, did you fucking, did you fucking tell? 
Hanako says, Nah, I ain't no snitch, bro. It's just... Just... Well, hello there, Hitchat. It's nice to see you again today. I Oh, I grimace and turn towards the unmistakable voice coming from behind me. That was way too upbeat a tone to feel comfortable even for Misha. Misha's happy smile is nothing out of usual. She's an A's, though, is a very bad sign. The one she wears has become notched into my brain. I've got you now. Hi, she's an A. Misha, you look happy? Not feeling well yesterday? No, I wasn't, but I'm feeling better now. Hmm. It's good to know. Why do I get the feeling that she's an A's leading me into a trap? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure Misha's a girl. It doesn't look like a trap. Uh, they are disabled, okay? We're dating disabled girls. You're so mean. You sound like you're not being completely serious. Oh no, Hichan. We're genuinely pleased that you're all better now. Hichan's an A is positively overflowing with happiness. There's only one reason why she would be like this. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, do I have a brother? Yes. I don't know who Ponyhoff is. In fact, we're quite worried about you after all. You and Hanako and Lily are all absent from class on the same day. Interesting. Yep, she's got us so thoroughly that I can, all I can do is sigh in defeat. I guess you have your own theories about this. Could you just not tell anyone? Look, look, it was her birthday and we went through like two boxes of condoms. So like, be chill. I suppose he's right considering the looks I got from the entire class. Still, things only seem to be at the level of vague suspicion rather than outright accusations. So we'll probably be fine. Hisao, two girls on the same night? You animal. The only reason we're giving you such a hard time is you ignored us yesterday morning. Yesterday morning? It takes a little while to recollect what happened, given the haze introduced by the generally awful state I was in. Oh, the knocking. Was it you two? It was, and you left it there for ages after we'd taken all the effort for coming to your dormitory early in the morning. Uh... I was throwing up. She's in his head, drops in resignation before she reaches to her pocket. Something white and yellow can be seen sticking out as she pulls it out. Turns out to be an envelope with very bright decorations. Oh shit, it's the white, it's the, it's the uh, ex waifu letter. Wait a second, why didn't you just slide this under the tape, under the door? Right, that's what they did last time. Last time they just slid it under the door and and now they didn't slide under the door? Whatever. This is what we're trying to hard, so hard to give you. You don't check your... I tune out the sound of Misha's voice as my eyes register what's on the envelope. Oh, it's the waifu. I stare at the envelope for a moment before suddenly remembering that there are people around me. That's very strange. Someone invades the feeling about their expressions. I kind of want to be alone right now. Iwanako? It's nothing, it's just a girl! I should think so, after all, we went through to get it to you. I step back and say my goodbyes. Misha theatrically pouts as I go out the door, but she's in a hunk who remain very visibly curious about my reaction. I hope they don't interrogate me on this later. The smell of the gardens is, as always, a very pleasant sensation. Some of the most visible signs of how well-funded the school is, aside from its sheer size, are the expanse and conditions of the grounds. A good number of students can be seen eating lunch, chatting, and playing on the bright green lawns. Even some of the staff is enjoying the summer here, keeping watch over the students and idly walking along the long concrete paths. I've never seen a site like this in my home city. On excursions, maybe, but certainly never in the school or anywhere near I lived. Even the bench I sit on is warmer Thanks to the summertime sun, reminding me of why I hadn't worn the school blazer even once yet. Considering this such a real background, yeah, it's almost like it's a uh, Photoshop. 
Considering this, the sunflowers and splashes of vibrant colors adorning the paper are quite appropriate for the time, if only the words written on it were as well. Here I was, thinking I managed to get over her, with this troublesome thing showing up. Her handwriting looks vaguely familiar at best, and only now that I see it again I remember that she used to write a pink pen a lot. She was always very girly. <laughs> what, a, what a girl. Ugh. Girls, right? Aren't they gross? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. you guys you guys get it, right? Fuck, girls are gross. The letter begins with not much more than an update on the state of things around in her life. My old school had a good start to the school year. Many are anxious about the exams that are coming up in the future, etc, etc. But the end is a very personal. But it ends on a very personal, if brief, note. It feels a bit like she wrote most of the letter just to try and soften a blow from the ending. I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right words don't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I'm really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered the most, even though I like you so much. At least now I can finally be more honest. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you to not give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had just said something. I hope you've managed to come back on your feet on your own. Now the distance between us is also physical. It also feels more final somehow. I wonder if we will meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't? Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you're doing. I wish you all the best. Um, I think, I think the only, I think the only letter I would have to send her is, uh, Uh, it's not even a breakup letter. All she did was give us a heart attack. And so, that's that. Our relationship is over. Nice, neat, and tidy with no ambiguity. I hadn't held on to any illusions that it would, could ever begin anew. The last time she visited me, neither of us said a thing except the one word she said as, we left, as she left. Goodbye. But that, be that as it may, this feels more final. The capstone on an experiment that both of us tried and failed at. A loud shout draws my eyes away from the letter. It's just some students horsing around and one of the teachers standing nearby coming over to talk to him. Are you okay? A tentative voice comes from my side. For a moment I assume it to be Hanako, but it's actually Yuko. Shit. Oh, Yuko, I was hoping you'd be prettier. I mean, more burnt. I mean, crispier? I mean, Hanako. She gives a cheerful smile, one quite fitting the atmosphere, and flourishes the empty wrapper of roll in her hand. She must have, she must have someone else coming for her, covering for her while she grabs something to eat. It reminds me that I hadn't had anything else to eat yet. I don't feel hungry though, and skipping one lunch won't hurt. Mind if I sit here? Sure. I quickly slide the letter back into my envelope, and I quickly slide into her DMs. Yuka takes a seat. She drops the wrapper into a bin beside us. Without much else to do, I lean back and take what enjoyment I can from the sun, slightly reflecting on the letter. The lush lawns, the clear blue skies, everything looks so different from the way it did back then. Even the school surroundings, from the hill it's on to the woods around it, are completely opposite from the urban scenery I remember. Maybe this is what it feels, what it, maybe this is what it's like to be homesick. Then again, it's not an outright bad sensation. The feel of the area around Yamaku, while very different, it's also nice. I think I could get used to it. Hey, Hisao. Yeah? You didn't answer my question from before. I wasn't going to say anything, but you still look troubled. If you don't want to say it, though, that's okay. I don't mind at all. Sorry for saying something strange like that. I don't mind. It's just I got a letter from someone I knew before I came to Yamaku and made me think about some things. This letter, the letter on this route is so much more important to us as a character than the letter in the last route. Like, when we got the letter from Emmy, I mean, during Emmy's route, all we did was read it and we're like, ugh, and it threw it away in the trash. But on this one, like, we're, we're mulling it over. I thought I managed to get over most of the problems that my accident caused, but now I'm not really so sure. I wish I'd never seen it. I don't think that's good, Hisao. 
When my boyfriend left me, he did so very suddenly and never let me know why. At first, I was very depressed about it, but then I decided to forget him. You forgave him? Couldn't he at least have talked properly with you about it? He was always one of those people that found it very difficult to come close to others. In the end, I decided I fell in love with him for a reason. He was a good person, and I think that if I had been in his position, I would have probably have found it just as hard to try and talk to him. I don't see the connection to the letter I got. How should I put this? It must have been very hard for that person to write that letter. And if they did, I think they must have thought very hard about exactly what to say. Iwanako managed to write this letter and bring a final close to our relationship, something I'd never managed to do. Whereas here I am, trying to protect and help Hanako as best I can, especially with Lily leaving for a while and I'm not even able to deal with my own problems. Does that make sense? She's taken my non-response and furled brow as doubt. She really reads faces too much, just like a certain other person. Yeah, that makes sense. The letter was just a state of shock, really. I think I'd forced, I tried to fool myself into thinking that my life reset when I came to Yamaku, but now I'm suddenly aware that it didn't. I'm a bit at a loss about how to deal with these feelings. Welcome, welcome, everyone from Kuko's stream. My name is Zinigami. We are playing Katua Shoujo, a game about girls. About girls with, uh, special special needs it's a special special needs girls but hey girls these is girl disease welcome everybody from the welcome to the stream if you've never played katawa shoujo it's gonna be very interesting i think that's something i can't really help you with sorry it's fine i think being able to talk to you helped me get things sorted out a bit better in my head so thank you anyways she nods and smiles sweetly. Yuko's a nice girl, so it's a shame she's so highly strung so often. Ah! Shit! The bell! Oops. She jumps off the bench and almost races off without a second word, but turns on her heel as she remembers she was talking to me just now. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. With a quick bow, Yuko takes her leave and begins her rush to the library. Her flight catches the curious eyes of a few students passing by who are unenthusiastically trudging back to their classes after their fun. Reluctantly, reluctantly standing from the bench, I dust myself off and join them. Even while I walk back to the main building, the thought of the letter in my bag doesn't stray far from my mind. The grades, baby. 